Hi, my name is Ken Spector with LivingEco.com, and I'm here today with a very special guest, and she's also a vendor on LivingEco.com. Her name is Melba Thorne, and she is the founder and she is the product developer for a company called Native Gardens. So can you tell me a little bit about Native Gardens, Melba? Well, Native Gardens started out as a raw vegan uh, dessert company uh, back in 2003. Mm -hmm. And uh, we make raw vegan cheesecakes, uh, torts, and we advanced into chocolates in 2007. Okay, very cool. So we're really here to talk about packaging because the packaging on your products is probably the best packaging I've ever seen. So let's just first talk about how did we get to this point of this packaging? I'm actually part of this story because I saw your chocolates mm -hmm. and I asked you what your chocolates were packaged in. What were they packaged in, Melba? Well, it wasn't sustainable and I, I was very embarrassed about that. Um, my goal is to be very sustainable. They were in boxes, but the tray that the chocolate was in was still a, a plastic container, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that, was, that has been all I've been able to find. Right, right. So during my struggles trying to find something better, uh, much to my dismay, I couldn't find anything uh, like I wanted, so I decided to take the paper making class and right, create right. my own packaging. So I had mentioned to you seeded paper and then a few weeks later you came back to me with something that was super cool. What did you come back to me with? Well I came back to you, well at first I came back to you with a box. Uh, it was a seeded box that, uh, that I had purchased. But it just really didn't quite do it for me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to expand and uh, explore and Go go to another level with it, mm -hmm. you know. And you did. And, and I wanted I wanted to use more color. I wanted to use more things that were local, and I just wanted to do my own own thing. It was it was paper making class by another eco villager, and his name is Brad Mowers. Mm -hmm. And he, he and I was so inspired and so excited because he taught us so many things, and basically we were using. Uh, cut up scraps from the yard and our old bills and everything and making this fabulous paper. Let's take a look at some of your new boxes. Okay. Wow. Okay, so this started off as a square box and now we have these beautiful pieces of art. Yes. For me, they just weren't, the square boxes just weren't fancy enough and some of the sustainable ribbons weren't exactly compostable. So I wanted to create something that was fancy in the paper that didn't really need a lot of ribbon, didn't really yeah. need anything extra. And, uh, and this is what you came up with. These are beautiful. What do you call this product? Chocolate and flowers in one. Very clever. When a person finishes devouring your chocolate, mm -hmm. what, are they, what can they do with this box? Well, they actually, you can, you can take it and, and you actually can put it in a pot in your window or you can put it in your garden and, you, and you'll grow a variety of wildflowers. Interesting. This isn't just paper and seeds. This is also wild flowers, petals. Yes. Yes. These are, these are uh, marigold petals, actually, that um, we are growing in the backyard. Right. Wow. So this goes beyond home compostable. This is post-consumer waste, and it actually grows. Yes. It's, it's, for me, it's giving a gift that blooms. That is beautiful. We have these two boxes here and I see a slightly different looking box. This one feels a little heavier. So it feels like there's some chocolate in here. Yes. It is. Okay. So let's, uh, let's open this up. And, uh, so I noticed first of all that, um, you, you've only used like one piece of material here. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, I wanted something that I didn't have to add, uh, a bow or anything else to. Okay. So that's why I kind of made the, the clasp uh, the closure as a flower, wow. Beautiful. you know. Beautiful. So uh, let's open that up. Oh yes, I see chocolate in here. Yummy. Okay. So uh, wait a minute, Melba. I thought you weren't using plastic. What's going on here? I'm not. What is this? This, this looks like plastic to me. This is not plastic. This is a uh, wood chip. This is wood chips. Yes. Since when are wood chips clear? Well, uh, they have cellophane now that is made from wood chips. So I, basically you can take this off and just plant it and it's totally biodegradable. Very cool. So and, actually, compo and compostable. 
So actually, you could take this. You could take this entire box with the chocolates, bury it, and it's fully home compostable. Yes. Very and, cool. And you'll have flowers. And you'll have flowers <laughs> at the same time. Yes. Wow, that is quite a gift. And now the chocolates themselves are what? They they they're organic. They're organic. Uh, they're vegan. They're vegan. Um, lactose uh, free. They're uh, very low sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, dark chocolate, uh, a lot of goodness, and not much... Um, not much badness <laughs> at all. No, <laughs> not much badness. Actually, actually, they're healthy. Uh, yeah. they're, uh, the chocolates are high in antioxidants because cacao is very good for you, Right. Uh, especially if you don't have the milk in it. That's right. So uh, dark chocolate is very healthy. I'm sure you. It's, there's a lot oh, of studies done about sure, dark sure, chocolate. Sure, sure. Wow, so this is like the ideal product. You have chocolate, which is healthy, and fully home compostable material that, that actually grows new life. Yes. That is beautiful. Let's move away from the chocolates a little bit and talk about a little bit about your other creative endeavors. So uh, let's talk about your rings here. Um, you had told me about these rings the other day, and uh, this isn't... This is actually made from a spoon, isn't it? Yes. So can yes. you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, well, I was thinking about when I started to make these rings. Actually, you know, they made spoon rings way back in the 70s. But I, I'm making them a little bit different than they were made before. And it's a different reason. Uh -huh. Because now um, I wanted to start making jewelry that um, was made from recycled things. And people most times don't use it their silver. So when I was back home in Tennessee on holiday and I was talking to my mom, I said, you got any silver? She says, oh yeah, it's some in the drawer, you know, and then, you know, I dusted it off and I started, and silver is very malleable. Right. So I started to say, wow, I should make some jewelry. You know, yeah. that would be fun. It's recyclable. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that more people would get into having jewelry that's, you know, from recycled, um, uh, metals or whatever because then hopefully we don't need to do as much mining sure and sure. the less mining we do the less problems we have in the earth you know sure sure so these are both these are two different rings made now how would you ship these how, how, as far as packaging goes how would you ship these uh to someone who buys them on the internet would you package them in do you, uh, I think it would be a good idea to put them in one of these, don't you? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. That's, what I, was yeah, that's yeah. what I was alluding to. Yes, and then, then it could bloom. Yes. That would be very romantic, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, let's figure out what we could call that. Uh, <laughs> silver and flowers in one. <laughs> Does that work for you? I, I think it would be very romantic, though. Silver and flowers in one. Yeah, I think that does work. Yeah, but what happens when I start using recycled gold? <laughs> gold, and, gold and flowers in one. Why not? Let's take a look at your necklace here. You, you also made this, didn't you? Yes. And what is your necklace made of? Yes, this is made out of silver. I made uh, a mold for this uh, Coptic cross here. And this was actually made from recycled silver as well. Um, it was kind of broken down and, and melted. These are stones that I was carrying around for a long time. And I had a, a pouch that I carried these stones in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're from the earth and they have different energies that I enjoy keeping. And I'm like, wow, you know, okay, the, the pouch, you know, keeps breaking because the stones are heavier and I kept finding more stones that I liked. And I said, I need to make, I need to make a piece of jewelry out of this. So this is kind of what I came up with. Very nice. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. And are you selling these also? Yes, but this is probably more of a custom would be more of a custom item because different stones represent different energies that that you feel comfortable wearing. Mm -hmm. So they're very personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the stones are very very personal. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. Well, you're doing some incredible work here. I mean, this is a great example of reuse, recycling. Yes. And uh, and, I don't, re and re enjoying. And, and rejuvenating. This one in particular is made with uh, blue laxpur. This is made of blue laxpur. Yeah. Interesting. Blackspur Interesting. Seeds. So this is one of the greatest examples on livingeco.com uh, in terms of business, sustainability, and packaging. And you certainly are one of our heroes on our site. Well, thank you very much. And I'm glad to be on your site. I'm glad you have a site. Mm -hmm. So whereas 
uh, more eco-friendly things can be uh, presented to the public so people have a lot more choices. Well, thank you so much, Melba. And thank keep you. up the great work and let us know what new packaging and new products you have. We'd love to list them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Right.